In Cleveland, the Cavs beating the Raptors for the second time in two weeks behind 27 points from LeBron. Kyle Lowry, uh uh-oh, had only five points on two of 11 shooting, including the last two postseasons. Toronto's now 7-17 and against the three-time defending East champs since LeBron's Cleveland return. This is not the time where we want to start talking about this again, but is this team doomed if they face the Cavs in the playoffs? They don't have LeBron. They don't have a guy that can match up with LeBron. I don't know how you address that unless you go get Kevin Durant or Kawhi Leonard. <laughs> you know what I mean? There's not many guys that can actually match with them, and I think that's what they're running into. They, they're much improved. You can see the style of play has changed dramatically. The ball is moving. The threes are flying. Their pace is up. But they just don't have the answer for him. And the best thing that can happen to them is to get that one seed and stay away from them as long as possible. You just reminded me of some coach. The last three times LeBron lost in the finals, the MVP was the person he was going against on the other team. Kawhi Leonard, Andre Iguodala, and Kevin Durant. Mm -hmm. Durant, if you can't make LeBron James work defensively, He's going to be extra dominant Forget about on the it. offensive end. By the way, this is not personal to the Raptors. Absolutely. No. It doesn't matter if it's Philly, Indiana, Washington, the Celtics. LeBron is an equal opportunity person when it comes to his dominating the Eastern Conference. My, my low-key favorite coach in the league is Dwayne Casey. <laughs> I just love Dwayne Casey, how his team reflects him. He's gotten better every year. His guys have gotten better every year. I feel like low key's out the window when you say it on now. Now it's high key, <laughs> but I'm just saying all of this Over time. No I've just always respected yep. him. You know, he kicked our butt when they were in Dallas as assistants. I just got a lot of respect for him and how he's grown and that team's grown. But mm-hmm. LeBron is LeBron, and that's just a tough matchup for Toronto. And I know you mentioned all those other teams, but there seems to be a particular cloud that looms over this Toronto team that when we get to this time of year, hmm. we all start to say, Oh, not again. Here are some numbers I just want you to take a look at. They've lost just twice to teams below wow. 500. They're two games over 500 against teams with a winning record. And they've lost all four games on the road against the Celtics and the Cavs. So I know they've improved. We've seen a lot out of them this season. But do these numbers do anything as far as putting doubt in your mind about just how good they are? It absolutely does. The Toronto Raptors are the first number one seed at this point of the season that we don't feel like have a legitimate chance to win the conference. That's about and the numbers you just show are exactly the reason. And a lot of times your role players reflect that. Dwayne Casey has done a really good job of building out his bench, creating some depth. Yep. But he needs those players to perform well against the better teams. In particular, one player that's an all-star, Kyle Lowry, who you said had five points last night. Right. He has to step up for him, obviously. You see how it looks when he doesn't play well for him. But one thing to say about Toronto more than in the past, the ball is spread around a lot more, and a lot more guys are getting involved in making plays and making shots for them. So I don't think they're overly relying on him. But for them to beat the best, he's going to have to play great for them. And, uh, you know, this is his test. Can he rise to the challenge? Well, it's time. Why don't we go up to Toronto, Canada? It is the site for the game tonight between the Celtics and the Raptors. Only the Rockets have a better home record than Toronto this season. He dot. Yeah. Bad. That is where we find our own. Cassidy Hubbard reporting from the game. Cassidy, what's up, girl? Hey, guys, like the new digs. It's really a uh, city that never sleeps for you two. Design them ourselves. Sure. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> All right, quick story time. So I'm on the call with Mike Breen, Doris Burke, you know, you know goats. Uh, so what do they know? But we were, we were on a game a couple weeks ago, and we were talking about this one, wondering if the Raptors and Celtics were going to play their guys because it felt like it was going to be an absolute lock that the Raptors were going to get the top seed. Well, what do DB and Mike Breen know? Because I've for everything. So, I mean, it's really surprising where we're at right now because the Raptors, look, they're three and five in their last eight games. And a big reason why is because Kyle Lowry, as he said, they haven't played good defense in a month. In fact, they have the worst defensive efficiency in the league since March 18th. Meanwhile, the Celtics keep doing the most with the least. They've had 13 different players starting. They've had 17 different lineups. They're 14 and four without Kyrie Irving. And Jay Jason Tatum is the only player on the Celtics, Jason Tatum, the rookie that is, that has played in all 77 games this year. So it's truly remarkable what the Celtics have been doing. And they lead this season series 2-1. So a win tonight would guarantee them the tiebreaker. So Jalen, I ask you this, with five games remaining, do you see Boston catching Toronto? Cassidy, that's a great question, and I understand why we're going there based on all of the numbers we just said about the Toronto Raptors. I think they find a way to hold on. You do? They do. They have a two-game lead. The franchise has never been a number one seed 
it would mean so much to their franchise if they're able to achieve this accomplishment. Mm -hmm. And also, I looked at their schedule. Oh, you yes. cheated. And they have the Magic in there. They have the Pistons in there. Both of those teams won't be going to the playoffs. And as we just learned, they fare really well against those type of teams. Yes, they do. But I'm telling you, this game tonight will let you know everything you need to know. Boston wins this game tonight. I got Boston taking over the number one. So I'm, I'm glad you said that because let's just throw numbers out the window for one second. I want to know about the mental side of if they lose this game tonight to the Celtics. Is that more damaging than anything else that can Very happen? much so. I think it definitely is a, is a chink in the armor. Um, this is a must win for really for both teams to get the number one seed, but for Toronto to climb and them trying to get to where they've gotten to. They're and at now, home. They're right there. They're at home. They must win this game. I don't like when the mental stuff gets in the way. It's like Greg Norman in <laughs> the old days. That's the best part about it. I know, it's crazy to me, though, because all season long I said, no, it's different this year. Toronto's going to be different this year. I don't want this to all start creeping back in. I'm going to put a name on it for you tonight, DeMar DeRozan. Yes, sir. This is where your all-star level player performs when they don't have Kyrie Irving to come back his, his productivity. And this, these are the moments where moments happen, where players rise. So Toronto's moment is here. DeMar DeRozan, it's your time to step mm -hmm. up and get your team over that hump. Yes. Well, the other guy, Kyle Lowry, the Raptors have cut back on his minutes this season. The whole reason for that is to keep him fresh for the playoffs, but he hit a lull in the last four games, averaging only nine and a half points on 32.